Hey guys, it's Lyra here. The three types of people who don't succeed in life. So I am getting these ideas this time from this book called Mastery, not by Robert Greene, The Old Mastery by George Leonard. I must say this is one of the best self-improvement books I have ever read. I'm so happy I read it. It's a short read. The font's pretty big. So you can get through this in like two days. And it's just jam-packed with wisdom, really interesting insights, and kind of like a new outlook on one's path to mastery that I never considered before. So in this book, he says that when one masters something, they embark on a new skill or maybe even like a career path. It's a lifelong learning journey, a lifelong learning process. And throughout that journey, you gain fulfillment and happiness. So he says the keys to success and long-term fulfillment. So everybody wants success and long-term fulfillment well, everybody's path to that is different and everybody's path to that involves mastering some kind of skill. It could be anything. It could be being a mother. It could be being a hairdresser, whatever. But either way, you are embarking on a new journey in improving some skill and therefore improving and mastering some aspect of yourself. So he says, there's three types of personalities that approach the journey to mastery in a way that causes them to fail. So the first type of personality is called the dabbler. And I think everybody knows this type of person. This type of person approaches any new sport, career, or relationship with insane enthusiasm. They are just so excited about this new thing in their life they're just like raring to go, you know, and they're just telling all their friends about it and posting Facebook statuses about it. And you know, those type of people are just like so into it when they first start. But because the journey to mastery is hard and it's not exciting all the time, it's really just exciting in the beginning. And of course, when you make major ma milestones, the in-between parts are boring and difficult. And so when the dabbler comes to that point of the journey where it becomes more boring and difficult, he or she starts making up excuses, saying that this isn't for him or this isn't for her. Then they move on to the next new thing. So I always call the dabbler the novelty addict. They're addicted to newness in life. And the same goes for their relationships. They're really good at the honeymoon phase. They love the newness of the person and getting to know the person and falling in love and feeling all those raging chemicals similar to doing cocaine. That's what they live for. But then once the honeymoon phase dies, they give up on the relationship because they're not in it for the long run, they're in it for the thrill. Okay, so the next type of personality is called the obsessive. So, the obsessive is someone who wants to see progress at all costs. They're like the CEO, anal, type A personality types that they have to feel like they are improving no matter what. They're like perfectionists when it comes to that. So they start off really strong. They make really, really strong advances in their journey to mastery, but they are not immune to the natural progression of learning a new skill, which is that things kind of hit a plateau and they don't see so much improvement even though they're still doing the work. So when this happens to the obsessive, they redouble their efforts and they work even harder to see further progress and they'll just keep pushing and pushing and pushing until either they burn out or they just catastrophically fail at whatever they're trying to do because they, they're just impatient, basically. So the obsessive person, which I thought was really interesting in a relationship, is someone who lives for the kind of razzle-dazzle in a relationship. They're there for the trips, for the extravagant gifts, for the 
erotic escalation so you know like new things in the bedroom seems like they're very like drama driven almost in a relationship they want everything to be go 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 and they don't want any downtime whatsoever in a relationship and the relationship becomes a roller coaster ride for the obsessive person because they feel like they're not seeing enough action in their relationship. And then of course things end horribly. And the author says that often in the case of obsessive people, the people that they're involved with get hurt. Obsessive people often just go too far and push too hard and end up hurting the people around them just to see progress. Okay, and then the last personality type is the hacker. The hacker likes to skip steps. The hacker is um, likes to take a lot of shortcuts. I like to see the hacker as someone who just kind of half-asses his or her way through life. They just kind of do the bare minimum in order to keep afloat, basically. And so that's what they do on their path to mastery is they skip a lot of steps and they avoid actually applying any kind of effort and avoid the difficultness of learning. In relationships, the hacker is actually really boring and they don't really put much effort into the relationship and they kind of see a relationship as a refuge from the uncertainties of the outside world. So the relationship is not something to nourish and to put any effort into. It's just kind of like a safe haven. That's kind of what the hacker sees a relationship as. Static monogamy. That is basically the hacker's viewpoint of a relationship. People are not 100% hacker or 100% obsessive. I don't think so. I think certain people approach different aspects of their life with these different approaches and that's probably why he or she doesn't really get too far with his or her goals. I saw this in myself. I actually saw I'm more of an obsessive and I'm more of a dabbler than anything else I find and I I saw these characteristics in myself and I think everybody has a little bit of these characteristics. You have to be aware of them and you have to be diligent enough to not let them kind of take over your life and rob your dreams from you basically. You want to reach for the master and the master even at the end of his arduous journey becomes the learner again. So the master is forever a student and forever a perpetual learner and they're willing to learn they are willing to do what's hard. The master perseveres the master is not too much of a perfectionist. The master has the ability to surrender to what he or she is trying to learn. And the master does not half-ass or try to take shortcuts. So yeah, I hope that this helped you and let me know what you think. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!